Now then, uh, it's 8.33. Just six days after she dramatically quit Liz Truss's government, Suella Braverman is back in the Cabinet. Her shock return to the role of Home Secretary has been met with criticism after she admitted breaking the ministerial code by sending an official <coughs> document deemed sensitive from her personal email. Well, Foreign Secretary James Cleverly joins us now. Good to speak to you this morning. Good morning. Many things to talk about. Mm -hmm. Can I start with you, though, if that's OK, as you're the one here talking to us? Um, you know, you back to Liz Truss during the leadership election. Um, when Liz Truss resigned, you backed Boris Johnson. Uh, he poured himself out the day after. And now you are in a cabinet with Rishi Sunak. Are you glad to be there? Well, I absolutely love being Foreign Secretary. It is a tough time. We've just been discussing some issues on the uh, international stage and obviously we still have the terrible situation of Russia's U uh, invasion of Ukraine as well as a number of other uh, significant challenges on the global stage. So there's really important work to do. I absolutely love working with the uh, FCDO officials and ministerial team, so I'm very, very uh, happy. And I think my appointment shows that Rishi is as good as his word. He said he wanted to build a government from right across the party uh, and he wasn't going to limit himself just to the people that supported him in uh, his leadership campaign. I think that is uh, magnanimous uh, and indicates a very uh, strong and important desire to make sure the whole of government and the whole of the Conservative Party is focused on the needs of the British people. So you now believe he's the best person for the job, having back to others before, because we now have to believe as a nation that the Conservative Party's got it right, don't we? Well, Rishi is an incredibly experienced uh, politician. He was the Chancellor during an incredibly turbulent time. Look, I, I'd worked with Boris for years from uh, our time working together when he was Mayor of London. Obviously, I worked with Liz at the Foreign Office, so I've seen them deliver. And obviously, I had loyalty to both of them as a result of, of working closely with them in the past. Um, but when given, the, you know, we were given the choice. We were given the choice between a number of uh, genuinely excellent, experienced uh, politicians. I made my choice at the time. But that shouldn't be read as me feeling that Rishi shouldn't or couldn't uh, do the job. He was, as I say, he was Chancellor during one of the most turbulent economic periods in post-war history, dealing with the impact of coronavirus, uh, bringing the furlough scheme in to make sure people could put food on the table and keep a roof over their heads. Um, and I am absolutely confident that he will, uh, with the team that he's building around him in government, be absolutely focused right. once again on the British people, because that's what we okay. all have a duty to do now. Be, be absolutely honest. You, you must have winced yesterday at two things that, uh, that Mr Sunak said in his address outside Number 10. He said that the, the previous government had made mistakes. Uh, you were part of that previous government and a supporter of that, of that Prime Minister. Uh, he also made it clear that, as far as he was concerned, uh, it wasn't Boris Johnson that had the mandate uh, to run the country. It was the Conservative Party, because it was the party that had been collectively elected. But you were saying, as recently as, as Sunday, that actually Boris was the only candidate who should be running for the, uh, for the Prime Ministership uh, job uh, because he did... He was the only person that had a full mandate. So there were two things said yesterday that flew in the face of what you've been saying up until, what, 72 hours ago? No, so uh, I wanted to make sure that we had continuity. I wanted to make sure that we could move on from the disruption. I felt... That, uh, that Boris had the experience, having you know, previously been the Prime Minister, but he chose not to stand. Uh, and rather than focus on uh, the, uh, the, the, the admittedly recent past, mm. I think we now all have a duty to focus on the future. As I've always said, uh, Rishi's an incredibly uh, experienced, unbelievably capable individual and politician. I am totally, totally uh, confident that he will be focused on the British people, and we all need to do that now. And irrespective of who we might have uh, supported in recent, recent leadership elections, Rishi was the overwhelming choice of the majority of Conservative uh, MPs. He enjoys yes, the confidence that, yes. of the Parliamentary Party, yes. and therefore we all have a duty now yes. to, irrespective of who we backed in the past, to support him 100% okay, so one, that we can work on behalf one, of the British people. One more question about the past, which I 
can quite see why you want to leave behind as quickly as possible. Um, um, the, the outgoing Prime Minister, uh, Ms Truss, yesterday absolutely made no apology at all for, 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 what, for what happened. In fact, she, she justified, really, her, her actions. Um, no apology at all. Are you prepared, as a member of her administration, to admit and just say publicly that it was a complete pig's ear? Well, the, the Prime Minister gave an interview with uh, uh, Chris Mason and she apologised. She said that she had uh, made mistakes. Now, self-evidently, things did not go the way she had hoped or wanted. And uh, that's why she chose to, st to stand down. She, she gave the ultimate apology by standing down. Now, clearly, she very much believes uh, that we do need to focus on economic growth. I don't think any Conservative will ultimately uh, disagree with her on that. But also well, what we do... She didn't stand down to say sorry, sir. She didn't... She wasn't saying sorry by standing down. She was told to stand down by the chairman of the... by the leader of the 1922 committee. He said, sorry, you haven't got the support, you have to go. She, did, she well, wasn't saying sorry by... by... come on. So the point is, she has said... she said sorry. She recognised that, um, that the, the plans that he, she had hoped to put in place had not worked the way that she wanted to. The economic situation that we face is not unique to the UK. We're seeing it right across the board. But she has conceded that she didn't get it right. Uh, that is uh, the reason that she ultimately lost the support of the Parliamentary Party. Rishi is in uh, the, uh, the job now. As I say, I know that he will want to be immediately focused on addressing the concerns of the British people, the, the worries that they have about the food prices going up, about fuel prices going up, about the war in Ukraine and about a whole load of uh, other issues. We need to focus relentlessly on them. And, and as I say, the fact that Rishi has built, sorry, the Prime Minister, has built a government of people that he knows can deliver rather than just the people that supported him in the leadership is massively to his credit. Well, the other controversial uh, emergence of yesterday and about to have in the Cabinet meeting this morning is uh, Asuela Braverman returning to be um, Home Secretary, um, just a matter of days from standing down for a security breach. There may be other politics involved, we're aware of that. But on that note, are you concerned about her return? She's a controversial figure. You're Foreign Secretary. You must be concerned about security breaches. Well, you, you, you use that phrase in a very loaded uh, uh, manner. It was a document that was marked sensitive. That's the lowest uh, level of, uh, of protective marking. But the point is, she said that she has... She said that she made uh, a mistake. She apologised for that. She stood down at the time. But clearly, the Prime Minister wants, uh, as I've said, to make sure that every government department is focused on delivery right from day one. She's, uh, she was a very recent Home Secretary. She knows the department. She has a very, very clear um, uh, view that the, the Home Office should be about cutting crime, it should be about protecting our borders, it should be about protecting uh, the British people. That's why the Prime Minister, I'm sure, has asked her to step back into that role, because he wants us all, right from day one, to be focused on delivering on behalf of the British people. OK, the other thing we're all keenly looking towards is Halloween and that <laughs> fiscal announcement. Is it going to happen? Are we going to get detail then? Or will it, as it's been reporting, now need to be delayed? Well, the, the date that uh, we set for uh, that statement was under the uh, previous Prime Minister. Obviously, I mean, just less than 24 hours ago, uh, the, the new Prime Minister stepped into his role. He will want to make sure that that fiscal statement matches his priorities and will be working with uh, the Chancellor on that. I don't know whether it will um, happen definitely on that date. I wouldn't be amazed if it slipped uh, a little bit, but we recognise that this is something that we need to do soon. People want to know what the plan, the economic plan for government is, both you know, families thinking about their personal finances and household finances and the international uh, money market. So it, it, it is a priority. It will be done as soon as uh, possible. But, but if, if, if it didn't quite hit that date, I, as I say, I wouldn't be amazed no, because well, that date was set under okay, the previous we, government. We take the, we, I think we take the meaning from, from that. It sounds to me as if you're dropping a pretty heavy hint that it is going to be postponed uh, by, by some time at least. Look, it, it, it might. It might. Well, there uh, we are. I, I mean, you wouldn't, I have said it, you wouldn't have said it, I don't think, if you didn't think it, that, was, that was very likely. Very briefly, to finish with... Um, sure. Mr Sunak did make all the calls that Liz Truss didn't make on uh, her first 24 hours in, in the job. He called all the people that he should have called yesterday, including uh, Zelensky in, uh, in Ukraine, and Zelensky has publicly asked him to visit Ukraine. Will he go, and will he go soon? And would, do you think he should, as Foreign Secretary? 
So I'm sure he will want to. Um, the relationship we have with the Ukrainian president and the Ukrainian people is incredibly important. You will understand for security reasons, I am not going to uh, speculate as to uh, exactly when that might be. But of course, our support for Ukraine and the Ukrainians is unwavering. Yeah. And we will stand, stand shoulder to shoulder with them until this is done. Until well, that's good to hear. Thank you.